because you're going to run into opportunities as an entrepreneur that you should probably say no to if they don't fit you. Because if we say yes to the wrong opportunities, we get dragged in this direction that's going to take all kinds of issues and put them on your table. And you've got to try to help people with those. You've got to be able to avoid those. And I think those three tools will help you do that. So good morning and welcome to another episode of Better Business, Better Life. Today I am super excited because I have got one of my favorite guests back again. So Scott Rusnak, who is an expert EOS implementer based over in the US. And he's been on the show a couple of times before talking about how to design your life before somebody else does. And today we're going to actually explore what living your ideal life looks like. So welcome back, Scott. Hey, Deborah, It's so great to see you and uh, be on your show again. Yeah, I oh, was. Well, so I've been looking forward to this for quite some time because you booked this a few months ago. I was like, oh, yeah, Scott's coming back on again. <laughs> so last time you were here, I think it was almost a year ago. And we were talking about, you know, designing your life and designing your year before anybody else does. Um, and I know that I've actually had a lot of people who've actually listened to that podcast. And I actually refer a lot of my EOS clients to listen to that podcast as well, because it's so valuable. Um, I think a lot of people <laughs> almost let their life just happen to them rather than actually thinking about what they want. So, um, yeah, that's been, I'm looking forward to to what we're going to talk about today. <laughs> I am too. Uh, as you know, it's part of who I am to make sure I not only surround myself with people I love, but to work with people I love. And I think you can get most everything out of your life if you really have a plan to execute. Yeah, I talk, we talked about the circles of friends last time from memory, um, which was really fascinating. And I've actually shared that with a few people. They're like, that's a great idea. <laughs> so, yeah. Hey, um, we, it's been about a year since we caught up. So what's been happening in your life? What's your professional and personal best since we last caught up, Scott? Well, the professional best, and I know this isn't a book promotion podcast, but the book is ready. It's being printed. Yeah. And it'll be, yeah, in the new year, it'll be, I guess the third edition will be, will be ready. So I'm excited about that. Um. And I've also had a couple of neat uh, graduations. Some long-term clients are, are finally graduating because we don't want them to ever feel like they're dependent on us. So it's really neat to see them uh, jumping out of the bird's nest and taking the rest of this on uh, themselves. Um, and then personally, I really do live my life knowing that I need extended clarity breaks. And my wife and I are just about to jump on a plane to go to a place we've visited a number of times in the last 31 years since we've been married uh, called Playa Grand Costa Rica. We'll be there for two and a half weeks. Beautiful. So you're actually taking a, a Kiwi Christmas break and taking a few weeks off. <laughs> well, we are both members of the Commonwealth. I grew up in Canada, so you've got to take that long break over the holidays. And I think yeah. you need to take many during the year. And I know we'll dig into that today. <laughs> I know you've got some other trips planned as well, which is really awesome. Okay, so we're going to start off by talking about, you know, living your ideal life. That's, it sounds um, beautiful, right? But what does it really mean? Yeah, you know, we've got a, well, a couple of tools at EOS that I always lean on. The first is the people analyzer that many people already know about. And I won't go too in depth in it, but if you really look at your core values and you look at not only your business partners, but your life partners as well, it might be your kids, your wife, your friends, are you living and breathing with your core values in mind and are they? And if they really get you, they want to be with you and they have the capacity to be with you and back at them, I think that's the first step. Just making sure you're surrounding yourself with the right people at all times. Yeah, no, that's a really good point. And that people analyzer um, is such a great tool. Real simple tool. This is what I love about EOS, the simplicity of the tools. There's nothing complex in it whatsoever, but it's just literally going through your core values. And as you said, asking if people actually um, live and breathe by those core values day in, day out. And it's tricky. Um, I have a number of conversations with clients and I talk to them about the people analyzer. Are they humbly confident? Do they do the right thing? We do what they say. At EOS, we say one of our core values is grow or die, but I say it's called grow or bye-bye. Uh, if <laughs> People don't want to grow. It's time to say goodbye because uh, I'm yeah. always pushing for more. And if I can surround myself with those kind of people, I think I'm probably headed in the right direction. Fantastic. Okay, so that's the first tool that you use. But you've got another favorite as well, haven't you? Oh, I do. Uh, I'll hold it up. And I, I'm sure you can put the, the Delegate and Elevate checklist in the show links. Mm -hmm. And so what I do with my Delegate and Elevate checklist is I take it up another level. And I talked about this at last year's EOS conference. So if you're looking at the, the tool, you'll see on the top left, it's what do you love to do? What are you great at? Top right is what do you like? What are you good at? And the bottom is where we really need to get clear on 
uh, something we don't like, we might be good at and don't like and not good at. And a lot of people look at it and say, well, that's really simple. I think I know what this is. Well, what I ask them to do is look at it each and every week, not only professionally, but personally. And I bet them that by the time we meet again in 90 days, that thing changes five or six times. So what I want my teams to do is not only say, hey, I love and, I, and I'm great at mapping out the year, using the people analyzer and coaching my employees and the people I work with. So that might be at the top. But then I say, well, well, what about your personal life? What do you absolutely love to do and you think you're great at? And for me, well, I love traveling the world with my wife. I make it yeah, very clear on the days we're going to go. We, we link up. It makes it really fun. But the other part that's important to me on my delegate and elevate is I love to surf and ski with my sons. And I have for a long time. And one thing that's allowed me to do is, let's call it trap them on the chairlift. <laughs> <laughs> and so when they're young kids, it gives me a chance to really go deep with them and find out what's going on in their life that's great and not so great. And when I talk to my clients and my friends about that, they start to get a feeling about who I am at my core. Not only am I passionate about sports, but I'm passionate real, about really having a great family. But also, I really want to be able to push forward and coach the right people and really dig in. So um, that's that's my first step with the people analyzer. What do I love to do and what do I think I'm great at? Mm. And it's interesting, isn't it? Because um, I think the box that I kind of struggle the most with has always been the stuff that I'm, I don't like, but I'm good at. Um, and from, for a long, long time, you know, I would actually do my own house cleaning because I'm really, really good at house cleaning. Um, but I hate it. And every moment I was doing it, I'm kind of, you know, grumbling and moaning and bitching and whinging about the, the cleaning I have to do. Um, and I suddenly realized that, okay, maybe I'm good at it because, you know, obviously it's something I'm, it, uh, I have a skill for, but I really don't enjoy it. And I think some Sometimes they're the worst things to be doing because you, you don't realize quite how much of an impact it's having on you, right? You know, Deborah, I didn't send you my delegate delegate checklist, but you must be reading it. Why? Have you got you got cleaning on yours too? <laughs> cleaning, anything technical, mechanical, anything around the house, mm. I won't do it. And I tell my clients that, and my wife actually has two boyfriends and they're like, what? She has two boyfriends. I'm like, yeah, Dennis and Jose. Whenever there's something broken in the house, she calls them to fix it. But it's made my marriage a lot better because we don't have to fight about getting the uh, new toilet seat from Home Depot or wherever you do shop. Dennis or Jose, they take care of everything because if I were to do it, it would be a five hour fight. Yep. And then flip side to work. Anything technical, mechanical, anything to do with marketing, LinkedIn, Facebook, I don't do any of that because it just looks like the pit of despair. So I'm pretty clear on the fact that you're not going to see me on social media unless my good friend Deborah posts something about this podcast. <laughs> <laughs> I have to be honest, I actually outsource some of my um, LinkedIn and stuff to people who are much better at it than me. I mean, I do, I do some personal things, but there's definitely some stuff that they help me with because, again, I'm, I'm good at it, but I'm not sure I really enjoy it. <laughs> well, again, you're reading my LinkedIn or my uh, Delegate and Elevate checklist. My assistant, Melissa, does all of my LinkedIn stuff. I, she mm -hmm. knows my tone. She knows who I am. And she presents herself as Melissa. Yep. I just won't do it. It's just a rabbit hole for me and I won't go down it. Yeah, no, fair enough. I think for me, I mean, I really enjoy sharing the stuff that we have. And so I don't want to stop doing that. Um, but I just realized it was definitely somebody else's um, could do it a whole lot better. And they enjoyed doing it. So that's the most important thing. So what about, um, yes, yeah, so we end up sort of with a list of things in, in two halves, if you like, four quadrants, but two halves. Oh. What do you do once you've got that list? Well, so it's tricky because we all think that we can get more done than we actually can. And so what I try to do is when I look at the bottom half of the list, the things that I don't like, but I'm good at, and I definitely don't like, and I'm not good at, I try to delegate at least one of those things every quarter. Okay. For every quarter, I set a rock for myself to delegate something. And I got really hung up in the last version of my book. It was done. I thought it was done. And I realized that I needed to find some to add a bit more grit to it. So I found a really great writer who's done some stuff on Showtime and for Apple TV. And he's just really put a nice sparkle on that book. If I would have done it, I'd still be sitting here with an incomplete book. So I try to find people that can take over these tasks for me that are much better at than I am. Mm -hmm. 
And so you've got you've got the two boyfriends, and I know you've got an assistant in the business as well. Okay, what are they? Yeah, my wife doing? has two boyfriends. Oh, sorry, your wife careful. has two boyfriends. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, there are two boyfriends in your relationship, I suppose. But yeah, okay. Um, so yeah, so you've got people who can actually help you. What other sort of help do you get? And how do you how do you decide who to delegate to? And then more importantly, I think how to let go because. Um, you're an entrepreneur like myself and we, we let's face it we are control freaks at times and so it can be very hard um to actually let go of the things even if we don't like them yeah. it's tough so what i do is i go to that bottom half and then i go to my people analyzer and i find find the right person as we call it, the right person in the right seat the right person is someone who fits my core values the right seat means they absolutely love to do it and I know that Melissa loves to send out calendar invites. She likes to send out invoices. She's great at all that marketing stuff and pulling together my schedule, whereas I'm terrible. In fact, today was case in point. I showed up 12 minutes late for this podcast because I didn't look at my calendar and she needed to remind me. So when we find those people we really trust, they can get us pointed in the right direction. Yeah. Okay. Cool. And so using the people analyzer, just making sure that they, they really do GWC, the role that you're wanting to give them. And then, you know, I, I read just something really interesting. It might be actually on the EOS Worldwide blog about the difference between sort of delegating and just um, relinquishing. Oh, God, it was a different word that they use. But, you know, delegate doesn't mean you can just kind of go, okay, that's it. It's yours. No responsibility from me. Just do it. There right. has to be some rigid sort of um, handover or process in place, doesn't there? Well, so this is almost perfect timing. A really good friend of mine, Leonard Linsky from Dallas, Texas, wrote a blog this morning on Delegate and Elevate. We should populate the show notes with that. And he sure. talked about his son who'd been appointed to be the manager of a coffee shop in Dallas. And he obviously was a great barista, really knew how to make the greatest drinks, but his team was kind of suffering because they didn't learn how to do it properly. So sometimes as entrepreneurs, we need to get really straight on those simple and easy but repeatable core processes and train those people on how to do things so they can be better than us. So if you look at that delegate and elevate, if you've got to be the manager or the boss, make sure those things are on the bottom on the bottom of your list are being taken care of. But then also go to your staff and ask them to fill out their own delegate and elevate to make sure that those things are being taken care of as well. Hmm. Now, I, I know that you just said that, you know, you should do this on a weekly basis to make sure that you're doing the right things. I, I bet a lot of people are sitting here thinking, I haven't got time, Scott. You know, I'm so busy. I just don't have time to do this. What would you say to that? So you're telling me you don't have time to floss your teeth? You don't have time to brush your teeth? You don't have time to shower? Um, I liken these as the same things. Not only is your brand going out in the world, smelling nice, looking good, but also the inside of your brain going, okay, am I taking care of, am I really taking care of who I am at my core so that I can design that life I'm really proud to live? And I think if you don't look at your VTO, if you don't look at your delegate and elevate and your people analyzer once a week, you're failing yourself. Because hmm. you're going to run into Point. opportunities as an entrepreneur that you should probably say no to if they don't fit you. Because if we say yes to the wrong opportunities, we get dragged in this direction that's going to take all kinds of issues and put them on your table. And you've got to try to help people with those. You've got to be able to avoid those. And I think those three tools will help you do that. Yeah, I, I agree. I completely agree. And I think it's a really important point is that we need to kind of be constantly referring to them, making sure the stuff that we're saying yes to is the stuff that really you know, makes the boat go faster or makes your heart sing is the things that are important for you. But also important is to say no, right? Um, we have to have very strong ideas about what are what we should say no. There's nothing wrong with saying no. Yeah, I love the fact you said, will it make the boat go faster? In fact, as a young kid growing up in Western Canada, I really tried to become a professional cyclist. And I got pretty good, but I didn't get to be on the, the level I wanted to be until my coach, Des, said, Scott, from today forward, and this is when I was about 17, said, you need to make every decision in your life from this point onward with one idea in mind. And that's an implementation intention that says, will it make the bike go faster? So instead of going for beers with my friends the night before a training ride, I'd stop. Instead of eating that pound of ice cream and I love ice cream, I wouldn't do it. So I've really taken that mantra to this point in my life. And it's kind of uncanny that Dr. Benjamin Hardy wrote an entire book about making a boat go quicker. But I got to give credit to Coach Des because he really put that in my mind to use these simple things to get yourself pointed in the right direction. 
Yeah, so being really, really clear on what that vision is and everything is, is helping you towards that vision. Now, I know that I've had this myself with some of my EOS clients where they sort of say, hey, look, this is really easy for you, Deborah. You know, you're a small business. You've only got a couple of employees. Um, for you to plan your life and decide you're taking these holidays and only doing this work on these days, et cetera, et cetera, is really easy. Uh, we run a business that's got, you know, 50, 100 staff. It's not as easy for us to do that. Mm. Um, I know what I say to that, but I'd love to hear what your thought is on that because you've, you've also been uh, in charge of running some large businesses and still yeah. live by the same mantra, right? Yeah, absolutely. And so when I go back to the people analyzer, I think of the five most important people in my life. And I've got to make sure that I've got intentional time set aside with those people throughout the year. So not only are we going to Costa Rica tonight for a couple of weeks, but I've got a trip with my entire family planned for Japan in February. And then we've got something in June and something in the fall. So I map out my year with the five most important people. And then I look at this next group of friends about 15 people. I want to make sure that I'm seeing them as well. So I put them in my calendar. Sample is here. Uh, I'm very intentional about it to make sure that those folks go in first. And then I look at other business associates and other things I'm going to be doing. And then I map map in all of my client sessions. And when I've, I've just gone through my first half batch of annual planning for the year, and my year is starting to get mapped out almost in full. So I know where I'm headed. Mm -hmm. That was a serious mouthful, so I, but I pulled so, off. And I even tell my clients, yeah. so like some of my clients, like Dutch Bros Coffee, that I've been working with for a number of years, thousands and thousands of employees, but their CEO is smart enough to say, hey, look, I'm going to make sure I've got that stuff mapped out for my family as well. So you can definitely do it, but you've got to be intentional. That's right. And I think, you know, one of the things that I actually took from our, our very, very first um, podcast was I got back into loving wall planners again. And mm -hmm. so now we have a wall planner at home in our um, in our room that has got our, um, all of our different work and um, holiday commitments and the same in the office. And, and I sat down probably about a month ago now and just planned out next year as well to make sure it was all very, very intentional. Um, I think I need to do it a little bit earlier. I think leaving it until November was perhaps a little bit too late, but nevertheless, it was really good to actually sit there and go, right, this is what is coming up and, and knowing then, uh, yeah, the, the most important things have been put in there. Well, and so I rotate my calendar every 90 days. So it's right there on the wall. I won't turn the, 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 the video over to there, but every 90 days I reset the next 12 months in advance. So I don't want people to think about it as a New Year's Day activity. I want them to think mm -hmm. about it in, as an any day activity. So let's pretend today is Feb 1. So why not plan out the first 60 days and then look at the rest of the year and then get straight on the 12 months. But every time you hit the end of a quarter, put another slot on the wall for the next nine or the next 90 days. Mm, that's a good idea. So it becomes part of your kind of 90 day world is actually yeah. looking at your calendar as well. And obviously, if you're doing your delegate and elevate on a regular basis, there's probably going to be more things that will um, fall out of that. Well, the cool thing is I send a picture of my calendar to Melissa, and then she inputs all the dates that I have personally onto my family calendar. So my wife and mm -hmm. my kids who are 24 and 26 know where we are. Um, and then I get her to populate all the client stuff because she takes care of that. It all meshes into this one beautiful thing. But me not being so technical... I can see it on the wall. And every time I walk out of the office, there it is. So it makes yeah. it really easy to operate. And I, I, I must admit, I have this, well, I actually have it in, all my, in my Outlook calendars. We've got a family one. We've got an EOS client one. We've got other bits and pieces in there. But the thing about the wall planner that I really love is at the end of the year. So yesterday, I actually snapshotted because I've actually officially finished with the year two. And so yesterday, I snapshotted my calendar. And what it gave me, because I use different colored markers for the different areas of my life and what I'm doing, so holidays, EOS, um, other stuff that I do outside of work. And it gave you a really clear picture of how much time was actually spent in each of those areas. Yeah. So it gives you a little bit of a visual to go, hey, is that the right amount of time? You know, Gino always talks about, you know, how many hours or, or days in a year do you want to work? And mm -hmm. did I actually stick to that? And I, I must admit this this year, um, you know, a few things I probably didn't stick to as well as I should have done. So it gives me a bit of an insight into next year, what I can do better next year. Well, so this is perfect lead up as well. Um, I call my time with the five most important people blackout days. So I've got these blackout days and on my calendar, those are blacked out. Okay. The red zone is when I focus on client activities. And to, typically I do sessions from Tuesdays to Thursdays, but an mm -hmm. annual planning season, which is typically after American Thanksgiving until uh, Christmas when I leave and then end of January, early Feb, that's all red zone. 
And red zone means I'm going to hundred percent focus in those areas. And I guess that's an American football NFL term. That that's when you punch the ball across the line. But I've got my red zone dates all planned into my calendar. And then the blue zone dates are when I'm with the 15 and the other 50 important people in my life. And I've got that down for more creative time, uh, mountain bike rides, ski trips, whatever it may be. But no one's ever going to hijack my calendar because if you were to look at it, you'd say, well, it's full. It's 100% packed. Yep. So if someone who's not in my five, my 15, my 50 wants to get on it, it's pretty impossible for me to let them in because I'm going to have to break up with someone already. <laughs> so it's tricky. Right. It is tricky. I love it. Okay. So um, what, what else in terms of living your ideal life? So we've, we've talked about the people analyzer, making sure you're surrounded by the right people, doing the right things. We've talked about, you know, delegate and elevate, making sure you're giving um, stuff over to people who can do it better than you, but also most importantly, enjoy it. One of the other, you've got the EOS, uh, VTO, which is, you know, your, your planning tool in terms of both long-term and your 90-day world stuff. What else do you do to make sure that you actually live your ideal life? Yeah, so there's two things. The first is, if you're not absolutely fascinated about what's to come next, I don't think you're really putting your nose into the game, your chin into the wind. And by fascination, I mean... Every 90 days, you should have a really fun break you're going to take. And if, even if it's just in your town, it, it might be an event with friends. If you're jumping on an airplane or going skiing in Park City like I do or surfing in Solano Beach, you should have those things that are just wonderful and you can look forward to. Because no matter how bad the day gets, you can always have in the back of your mind that you're going somewhere really cool and you can have a lot of fun. So we've got to have those keep fascinated goals that really keep us looking forward. It's interesting. I, I don't know if you know, but I just recently bought a new car and it's a, a step away from the usual kind of cars. I've always been a bit of a European sports car girl. Um, yeah. But one of the things that my husband and I love doing is actually going on adventures. And we, we were very clear when we got married that we wanted to make lots of adventures. And so I've bought myself an SUV um, so that we can actually easily take the kayaks, the bikes, all the dogs in the back and actually go off and do things. And so we've been planning out some long weekends away to various different places to take the car and, and enjoy that. And I have to say, like you said, it gives us something to look forward to. Because even when you love what you do, there are still some days when you're going to be tired, when you're going to be, um, you know, not quite feeling it and, and something goes wrong. So having something to look forward to, I think, is really important. Yeah, absolutely is. Those extended clarity breaks are important. Yeah. We say to take so, weekly clarity breaks, but you've got to have extended ones as well. That's a really good point. So clarity breaks, you and I both know what they are. But for those who might be listening for the first time, what do you, how would you describe a clarity break? They come in different sizes, shapes, and formats for me. But the easiest one is just to step out of my office or my home. There's a beautiful little pond that's about a five, six-minute walk away. And I'll just go sit there with a blank piece of paper and a pen, no electronics, nobody bugging me. I just sit there and I think. And the crazy thing is when I just have time by myself to think, I start solving some of the trickiest problems. Or at least I get ideas on how to nudge things forward. So... Every week, I take at least one or two of those real simple secluded clarity breaks. But then I schedule in longer ones. So, you know, I love to mountain bike. So I take these three, four hour long mountain bike rides on the weekend. Nothing in my ear. I'm just on the trails and stuff just comes to me. So yeah. weekly clarity breaks, extended ones, and then vacations can be clarity breaks as well. Just as long as you're surrounding yourself with the right people and it's not a... Uh, big mosh pit of people you don't know, which I completely <laughs> avoid. Fair enough. Um, and so, I mean, obviously, yeah, the mountain biking is a great one because you've got nothing going on while you're there. When you go on holiday, I'm just curious because I always still take a couple of business books to read. I can't help myself. I, mm. I find it's a nice time to actually sit, relax, and I, and I actually find reading is probably one of the few things that's my non-active relaxing, if you like. Yeah. What about yourself? Do you What do you do when you go on holiday? Do you completely remove yourself or do you take books with you? Uh, I've got audible books. I, I'm not much of a reader. I always fall asleep when I read, but when I listen to a book, I'm good. Um, but I start my vacation, typically my holiday by two or three days of nothing. There's just okay. so much coming at us. And today actually is my prep day for my holiday. I take a day off before I actually take time off. So you know, I made sure the packing was straight, that the dog got off to the, you know, the, the vet place to the little the doggy ranch. Went saw my, uh, saw my eye doctor. So I just got all these things straightened out in my own brain so that I was ready for my holiday. And at the start of it, it's just three days with my wife and I before 
my sons and their friends start arriving on the Friday. When they come, they start asking me questions about the books and everything else. So I'm kind of prepared for that as well. So absolutely. Uh, a couple of my favorite books from this year are down below, At Your Best by Carrie Newmelt and uh, Mickey Singer's book, The Surrender Experiment. So those are uh, ones I'm going to reread again. There's absolutely wonderful books. Great. Now that's really good. Um, so, <laughs> I the other thing, a couple... Sorry, Deborah, that yeah. uh, just step back from the books and other things I do is it's little known to people who aren't within the EOS uh, world that we also have a tool that is similar to the VTO for business. It's called the Personal Life Plan. And you mm -hmm. can still build your own family VTO and your own personal VTO with this two-page document. So uh, it's, it's something that's really helped my family stay straight on our values, our core target, and what we want to be able to accomplish as well. Yeah. Actually, it's interesting, isn't it? Because it is sort of once you start doing EOS in your business, it does start to flow over into your life. But it's not but it's not a forced thing. It just actually happens naturally. Um, I know that my husband has started, you know, whenever we have a, a an issue or a challenge, um, he always said, oh, should we IDS that? <laughs> and that's that's just come almost by osmosis from him hearing me talk to my clients about IDSing. So we're starting to bring in little, little bits of EOS into life without even realizing it. And one of my clients the other day actually said to me, you know, he was just um, super excited because one of his kids had actually said, hey, look, we've got a, a problem here. I think it's going to be really good if we actually IDS this problem to get to the right solution. <laughs> <laughs> well, you have to be care how, careful how much you bring to home because my wife has said to me a couple of times lovingly on a walk, don't you dare IDS me today. <laughs> <laughs> but yes, when in the right place, IDS can be fabulous. Yeah. So if anybody wants to get hold of a copy of that Life Planner, um, obviously I can I can let you have that. So just um, drop a, a note in the in the podcast comments. Okay, so we've covered quite a lot already today. So we've talked about, you know, using the people analyzer, delegating, elevating, um, doing it every week to make sure that you're on top of it, using your VTO and your 90 day cycle to kind of review things, including your your planner on your wall, um, checking in with, um, you know, your the, the people in your life to make sure you've got the people not only in business, but in your personal life as well. Huge amount of stuff there, um, but I'm still going to ask you for your three top tips to design your ideal life, just so that the listeners go away and have something they can really start to work on. Yeah, for sure. We've talked about some of them already, but I'm really yep. intentional about it. I call them tent poles. So every quarter, you've got to have a tent pole, something that points up that says, here's where I'm going, and I'm really excited about it. As mm -hmm. much as I'm excited about going to Costa Rica, and that's been in the calendar for a long time, I've got a trip to Japan. We're going skiing in Japan before our Dallas QC. So that's coming up in about 60 days. Yeah. I know that on June the 22nd, we're going to Helsinki. I know that on September the 9th, we're going back to British Columbia. And I know next year at Thanksgiving, we're taking a trip with some friends. So I love having those points of fascination that I call tent poles every year in my calendar. It gets me excited even when I'm at the lowest of lows. Mm -hmm. Got it. Yep. Number two, I'll go back to Dunbar's number, the five, the 15, the 50. Make sure you really are surrounding yourself with people you love to be with so you can make a massive impact in the world. And then the third one I kind of sprung on you was the personal VTO, the personal life plan that's part of EOS. And I think that the people in your market should really reach out to you for that tool and ask you for a bit of coaching around that because that could just be something that takes your life to an, another level. Yeah. It was really interesting. I was actually at a, at a function the other day and one of the speakers actually asked the audience, about 120 people there, you know, how many of them actually had a plan for their life? Yeah. And only two people put their hand up. Now, I was one of them. Um, I'm yeah. pleased to say, but that, yeah, the rest of them weren't. And it's like, it's really fascinating because as a business, we know we have to have a plan. Um, yeah. But the, the same applies to our life, right? I mean, it doesn't mean you have to be absolutely rigid, but yeah. it actually gives you more freedom by knowing what is important, in, in my opinion. Well, that's why you're one of the best of the best. And if people have that plan and, you know, it, in the VTO, we have a 10-year target, which you can also call a core target. Well, I switched mine this year. It's an eight-year target. I'll be 65 in eight years. Can't believe it. But I know where I'm headed and I'm pretty sure that those things are going to come together. Of course, there's going to be roadblocks and obstacles and disruptions, but I'm pointed on the future. I use that long-range thinking really to make sure that I've got that right attitude to get there. 
65. Wow. That's, um, yeah, it's, it's funny, isn't it? Because, do you know, I actually do a lot of work um, helping people with those 10 disciplines of managing your your energy. Yes. And, yeah, one of the things Gino talks about is that long-term thinking. And so one of the first questions we get people to do is go, hey, you know, do, do the 10-year time. How old will you be? And it really starts to bring it home to you, right? Because in 10 years' time, I will be 62. Um, yeah. And I never never thought I'd get to that age, if I'm honest. So it's, it's quite exciting. <laughs> <laughs> but it does start to make you think very carefully about, you know, we've got a limited, what do they say, a limited number of summers. How many summers have you got left? And are you doing the stuff that you really, really love with the people you love? Are you, you know, <laughs> making time to pursue the other passions, all the EOS life stuff that we talk about? So, yeah. Well, um I've got a little hack that uh, I always put into my summers and to my days off. Uh, people ask me, how many days are you going on vacation for? And I'll say, well, I'm going for 30. They're like, wow, that's crazy. And I said, well, well, hang on though. It's really in the human hours, it's only 15 days, but I typically have about an hour nap during the day and I get to wake up and do it all again. So I like it when I go on vacation, I split them into two days at a time. So I might be going for 15 human days, but I'm really going for 30 Scott days. So. <laughs> that's fantastic oh scott it's a pleasure as always to talk to you i hope you have a wonderful wonderful trip well what many trips but the first trip particularly with your wife um if people want to get in contact with you and if they want to get hold of the, the latest edition of the book how do they do that it's only on amazon and i think it's only in the states but i'll have to check with the publicists because they were going to make sure it was sort of worldwide so uh okay. they can hit me up at scott at scottrusnack.com but I think the smartest, smartest, the wisest thing they can do is reach out to you first because you've got a ton of information and I know you're a world-class coach. Oh, that's very kind. Thank you very much, Scott. Hey, look, as I said, honestly, I, I really, really do look forward to these these times. And I know that you've been hugely supportive of me, of me outside of the podcast as well. So I just want to say thank you for everything that you do for me, for the world, for your clients. Um, thank you so much. Uh, you're the best of the best. Thanks, Deborah.